Would you punch a baby <laughs> to end world hunger? Now, this is a very difficult question to answer. Simon bought a hole here dressed like E.T. today because, you know, it's fun to be dressed like E.T., a film from 1984. Whatever the hell it was, and I asked you on my YouTube community feed to ask me some controversial questions, not offensive ones. There is a difference, and you have done that. Now, I've read these because I think it's more fun just to react to them as we do go. But if they're not very controversial, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what I asked for. So we will start with Stubborn Clump, and I have absolutely no idea that would be. And to be fair, he has pulled it out of the bag, because he said, would you punch a baby <laughs> to end world hunger? Now, this is a very difficult question to answer, because could I actually punch a baby? I don't think I have it in me. So I don't think I'd be able to do it. I don't think I'd be able to bring myself to do it, which puts us in a very difficult situation with the question. So I guess my answer is no. <laughs> So I would be the reason. Everyone would go starving, and it would all be down to me. But that baby would grow up. My best friend. Hamad Edmon says, would you ever consider TRT? Absolutely. I have no problem with TRT whatsoever. And when I go on it, when you know, I get to my late 30s, will I tell you about it? Yes. I just think you should. Well, it's twofold, really. One, you should wait until you actually need it because it's a medicine. And it should be uh, your doctor telling you to do it. And two, it's really expensive. That's the other thing. So you need to get the money to do it. But yes, there's nothing wrong with TRT. If you want to do TRT, do TRT. When I want to do TRT, I will let you know I'm doing TRT. And look, I am in my 30s already. So it could happen sooner rather than later. Look, here's the deal. If you all start watching more of my videos and my revenue goes up, I'll do flipping TRT. Get bin, get bun, something like that. That wants a bun, I suppose. Have you ever advertised Raid Shadow Legends? This is the greatest question ever. If so, how much did they pay you? I don't remember how much they paid me. Uh, I did do it under the proviso that I was allowed to play it first. And if I didn't like it, I wouldn't do it. So I did play it. I, I was getting a bus somewhere. This is a while ago now. So I must have still been in London and doing a job because I already get the bus. So you don't need to know that information. But I was on a bus because I, I had these commutes of like 45 minutes. And yeah, I played it for a good, what, six, seven, eight hours. And I thought, oh, it's actually quite fun. Now, it's, it's microtransaction heavy, but I'm like, well, everything's microtransaction heavy. So yes, I was happy to do the videos. They probably paid me, I mean, not a great deal because my views were all over the place. It's probably like 250 quid. Aussie chap, who I'm guessing is from Australia, says, how tightly do you have to strap the lads in before wrestling? I presume you're talking about my penis and testicles. I mean, we probably should do that, but we don't. I do wear a thong, though. I once saw a tweet from Lance Storm, who was like, why, why are people not wearing thongs anymore in wrestling? I can see your pants through your gear. And I watched one of my wrestling matches back and you could see my pants through my gear. So I have a few bodybuilding thongs for my bodybuilding competitions. So that kind of protects them. But now you're probably right. We should do something. Bojan Kovacev has quite a, a, a long one. But this is where we get quite controversial and interesting. So that's good. Do you listen to rap? And if you do, do you follow what is happening with Kanye? What is your opinion on the situation in case you have any? Because it is scary how he can spew Nazi propaganda with little to no pushback. Especially with him being one of the most famous people. Not only in the music industry, but in the whole world one love. Now, I do believe we have a video about Kanye West going up next week. It doesn't really touch upon this because I tied it into fitness because I thought that was important. And a few people asked me about the Kanye West stuff, I presume because I am a Jewish man. And my opinion isn't going to shock you at all. I thought it was horrible, terrible, disgusting, scary, worrying, frightening. Uh, you know, it's not just the Jewish community. There are a lot of communities right now where the madness and the anger against them seems to be seems to be growing. And while, of course, we can all understand this, you're always going to understand it more if you are in it. That's just how the world works. Like, if somebody gets called a bald guy and you've got a full head, you can still go, well, that doesn't sound very nice. But to me, it will cut twice as deep. So, I don't... Look... Kanye West should not be allowed to say these things. Kanye West should suffer more consequences. I believe in free speech, but I also believe in there is a consequence to your actions. And I just, I totally agree with you. I, I, there should be, I mean, just banning someone off social media to me isn't enough. And I know he went on the Piers Morgan show. I don't watch it, but I saw clips on Twitter. And he said he did it because he wanted to be racist. Well, that doesn't make it better because people look up to Kanye West. And people, whether he likes it or not, will see Kanye West as a role model. So... I think there needs to be more accountability. I think there needs to be more discipline. I think there needs to be more integrity. Just don't hate anyone. Hate someone. No, don't hate anyone. But if you just like someone, just be, be it on their personality. You just don't get on. That's okay. But color, race, gender, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. Let people live their lives. It really has no bearing on you whatsoever. So yes, 
terrible all round, to be completely honest. And in those moments, I do get a little bit insular, I suppose, or introspective is, is a better word. And I think about these things and you know, people always said after World War II, never again. But then you see stuff like that and you think, well, maybe again. And that's never where we want to get to. So yeah, all around terrible. Andrew Wright says, do you believe that PED use is prevalent in the amateur wrestling scene? I presume you mean independent pro wrestling scene. Do you ever hear any locker room chat about that kind of thing with the guys you work with or do people tend to TV it to yourselves? Well, I have never had anyone outwardly go, I'm shooting this, I'm doing that, I'm taking this. But of course, people are going to be on stuff, much like they are in the pro-pro leagues. I really don't think it's a big deal. I think as long as people are taking care of themselves and getting their blood work done and they are healthy, do whatever the hell you want. It's not a competitive sport in that sense. But I think the big problem, we talked about this on videos before, is that nobody gets their blood work done. They just take whatever they're given, they jab it in their ass, and they think they're going to be okay. So as long as people are taking care of themselves... I think they should be able to do whatever the hell they want. And then if all of a sudden the markers go bad, stop doing it. But I mean, it probably is prevalent. Yes, but that's based on absolutely nothing on my end. But it is an aesthetic sport. So if you're into the gym and you want to do that, look, this ain't nothing to do with wrestling. <laughs> this is to do with life. More people now are on PDs than you, would, you wouldn't believe. Go into pure gym. PDs. I just want to point out, not just pure gym. I just mean regular ass gyms. Federico says, what don't you like? <laughs> about working for what culture it's an interesting question i mean there's nothing i don't like i like working for what culture is people are always astounded about like oh simon you need to leave or something i'm quite a good time to be completely honest with you um i say that's a that's a few crazy people on twitter i shouldn't uh, i shouldn't amplify that it really is a tiny tiny percentage what don't i like about it well i suppose sometimes i'd like to do a few more stupid videos but again that's not I don't not like that. I understand why they don't let me do that because it wouldn't work and it would appeal to a tiny portion of the audience. And that's not the game we're, game we're into. But no, I, I think it doesn't really tie into what culture. I would prefer it if there was more conversation between um, you know the, the people that do go absolutely nuts on, on Twitter mostly. And they're like, oh my gosh, just a clickbait headline. So let's actually talk about this and try and, and try and figure it out and also see what other people are doing too. Like, Of course, some of it is going to be over the top clickbait, but that's the same with all websites and YouTube. Sometimes you swing and you miss. But no, there's not a lot. I, I don't like working about it. I mean, there probably should be, apparently. <laughs> But there's not. Stuart Penza says, did you ever think about leaving what culture? It's the what culture section. When everyone left to form cultaholic, or would you rather have a great aesthetic look or be crazy strong? What aesthetic look? You know, that's kind of what I'm, I'm into the most. Uh, no, I didn't. I've told this story before. All those guys let me know, I think on the same day as they were launching it, that that's what they were going to do. I wish them well. They wish me well. And ever since then, they've been smashing it. I believe that what culture has been smashing it. There's enough room to go around. Again, that was five people leaving. They had enough to worry about. Once again, I was perfectly happy at what culture as I'm doing now. So from my point of view, it was totally cool and totally fine. The issues came, once again, from the mad people on Twitter who all went, Simon, you did this. <laughs> like I was in charge. I'm like, Mother Hubbard, I've been here two minutes. Dan Miller, good name, says, Do you think if fake natties are more transparent about their PED use, you can see a theme with this video, this would in fact create an issue of more people feeling the urge to use them to replicate the results? I mean, yes, I think you're right. But also, no, I think you're wrong. And the reason I say that is because, I, as I always say, just assume everyone's doing it and then you have to worry about it. If you just think everybody's on drugs, you're like, meh, then what difference does it make? So you think I'm on drugs, you think Greg Doucette's on drugs, more plates, more dates on drugs, uh, Kanye West on drugs, he's come up, what culture, they're all on drugs. Just assume that everyone's on PEDs and it will make you feel better. But I suppose there is absolutely a logic in if fitness influencer X, who has an amazing physique, comes out and says, I've been doing, I don't know, drug A. For, for the last two years and yes probably yes they would they would they absolutely would and it would be bad but i suppose it's, it's a lose-lose situation you either get people thinking i can achieve this natural and they can't or you get people now thinking oh i should go and get peds and ultimately what you should do is you should make the decision based on your own objectives and your own morals and your own choices and do the research and understand that there is going to be a knock-on effect and there's a side effect to everything you put in your body and that it is dangerous just accept that it is it's it's a dangerous thing to do whether you want to you want to debate that or not it still there has a element of danger to it so i would always say don't worry about anybody else it really doesn't matter once again more people are probably on than you think just because the ease of use and the amount of information that's out there like so you can buy psalms or is it psalms i get confused i think it's psalms you can buy psalms on the internet 
They're just there. Why aren't these sites being closed down? Gregory Stab says, is pre-workout bad for you? I heard Coach Greg say this a few times. What's your opinion on it? Well, it's bad for you if you overdose it, and I do think people rely on it too much. But if you um, treat it like you would do anything else in moderation, no, it's fine. I take pre-workout probably twice a week max, and even then, not really. I usually take it before a leg day, because I feel like, at the moment I'm going to do one leg day a week, I'll talk about it in another video. So it's like, okay, well, I really need to, I really need to, to make sure I'm getting a good leg workout. So I'll take it then for a boost. But otherwise, I try not to because you do get diminishing returns. Like the first time you take pre-workout, you're like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. And then the next time, it's a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less, which is why I actually, you don't have to do it, like health-wise. It probably actually is quite good for you. I would cycle pre-workout. I would cycle caffeine. I really, really would. Because then all the caffeinated effects come back. And it starts working better again. Jay says, what do you think it would take for pro bodybuilders to not have body dysmorphia? Bro, I've got body dysmorphia. I think everybody that walks into a gym and picks up a weight has body dysmorphia. It's just the way. And I think ultimately you shouldn't fight against these things. You should, I don't want to say learn to live with it because some people aren't going to be able to live with it. But you just have to accept that we're not perfect and we are human beings and we're going to have foibles and we're going to have flaws. And that's okay. That's the secret to all of this. It's okay. It's all right not to be perfect. In fact, being perfect would probably suck. Draywood says, if you had gone the other way and not developed such an impressive physique, well, that's a nice thing to say. I don't agree with you. What do you feel you would be doing career-wise? Well, I would be doing the same thing. I don't think I got the what culture and the video stuff because of my body, although if I did, awesome. <laughs> I'd be fine with that. I mean, it did help with wrestling because I'm older than the average cat that gets into wrestling again already in my 30s. So that helps because, you know, the physique is a, is a part of it. But no, I think I would still be doing the same thing. Like back in 2011, where I really got invested in YouTube, um, I was smaller than I was now because it's like, you know, I've had a good 10 years of, of trying to put on, on muscle. But I was, I was kind of dead set on trying to make something of that. So now that we have... I think it's pretty cool. Cyan says, hey, Simon, how did you pick your entrance music and what advice would you give to someone looking to find some? I mean, get your own done, I think is cool because while having licensed music rocks, you probably can't have it on YouTube and stuff. And if you want to show your stuff off, you may get in trouble. Uh, mine was done by a guy called David Lopan, I believe. Is that his name? I should look this up, but I wasn't ready for that question. If I've got that wrong, a thousand sorries. And someone just recommended him to me and he absolutely smashed it. He was great. Uh, my original entrance music that I still use in some promotion was written by the bassist in my band, MG the Juggernaut. Thank you very much rich so that's the best way to do it i mean if mikey ruckus i think you can still hire even though he's you know tied up with the AEW stuff but i think he's still you know a dude for hire so i would just get recommendations and tell them exactly what you want like be super super specific so you know give them ideas and give them songs that you're trying to <laughs> rip off essentially and I think 99% of them will do a good job. Christopher Stein says, do you think we will see a time when wrestling companies trade contracts like we see in other pro sports? Or do you think we will go back to more territory days where wrestlers move from company to company more often instead of long-term contracts? Well, at the moment, it seems like people are signing long-term contracts as the wrestling war heats up. It's funny you say that. I was having this conversation the other day because it should be like pro sports. That'd be a lot more fun. But ultimately, the reason, you know, Man City will sell a player to Liverpool, although it rarely happens, but back in the day, right, Van Persie went from Arsenal to United. I was like, what are you doing? So it can happen. Or Sol Campbell, for example, Tottenham to Arsenal. But I think the difference there is you are working with vast sums of money and you're working with, there are so many different teams, right? So you do, you've got Arsenal, you've got Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Bournemouth, Norwich, you know, Wolves, it goes on, so on and so forth. And it's like a big circle, you know, even though Man City are dominant right now, you have to still go with the ecosystem. <clears throat> you still have to go with the ecosystem to make it work. When it comes to WWE and AEW, who are the two biggest companies, that's it. Two entities, and they're in direct competition with each other. So if the football was just Man City versus Liverpool, you'd never see it, right? And it's the same kind of a deal. So, yes, I think we'll go back to a territory thing. I mean, what do I know? But if I was a wrestler right now, I, I would, unless you've got a super good deal, it seems to make sense to sign a two-year contract and then get to the end of the two years and then you can just get a bunch of money. But then look how awesome John Moxley has been signing a huge contract and Jericho getting lots more money, more than deserved. And again, dedicating themselves to the brand. So ultimately, I think, you know, am I mad that Jericho's not going back to WWE? No, he's awesome in AEW. I still get to see Chris Jericho. That's all that really matters. Brandon Dulom says, not really controversial. Bro, what are you doing? But <laughs> can you do a pain scale 1 to 10 for wrestling moves and spots you've taken, such as chair shots, table spots, suplex on the floor, <laughs> or apron, and give us perspective of what it's like? Well, in terms of pain, yeah, so pain scale. So... That's a difficult one. So I once took a, the scariest thing I've ever done, not really pain, as I took a power bomb off the top rope through a table. And it didn't hurt that much because the table breaks your fall, but I was terrified. In terms of thing that hurt the most, any kind of front bump from a high angle does, because nine times out of ten, you wind yourself. I remember some, I mean, clotheslines and lariats often get you because people will lay that stuff in. Like a chop, for example. 
I've still got Adam Maxter's handprint on my chest. Check it out, UPW. Ultimate Pro Wrestling Steel Cage main event. I'll, I'll, drop a, I'll drop a link in the description below. Me versus Maxter, title versus title. Um, but that's the stuff that kind of hurts the most. And again, landing on your front is always bad because your back, you can kind of take a lot of the a lot of the Gs. What else did you want to know? Uh, apron doesn't hurt any more than the ring. That's an absolute myth. I don't know who made it up, but it is funny. Or maybe just some people. I haven't taken that many apron bumps. But it felt the same to me. Chair shots don't hurt because your adrenaline is really up. So that's usually okay. And table spots are actually... Anything on the floor sucks. I've only taken a couple of things right on the floor. But obviously there's no give. And it's never, ever any fun. And we finish with Sandra Watson, who says, I know this isn't wrestling or weight training related. It doesn't have to be. It can be whatever you want. But I love how positive and kind you are in your videos. Isn't that nice? Doesn't make you feel all warm and fuzzy in your tum-tum. How do you stay so positive when the internet can be a hateful and hostile place? Well, Sandra, I have a very, very bizarre way. I want to say of dealing with it, because that sounds like I was ever struggling with it. I wasn't. Of approaching it, I suppose. As far as I'm concerned, if I make this video and somebody drops a comment below, like they did on my wrestling video the other day, that said, you should stay out of the industry and just be a weekend warrior. We don't need any more jokes. I think, isn't it awesome that that guy has watched my video, engaged with my video, and reacted to it in the comments? That's, that's what, again, we talked about the YouTube stuff. That's what I wanted. I wanted to get a, an opinion, whether it was good or bad. So when someone comes at me on Twitter and says, Simon, you're bored. I hate you so much. I'm like, isn't it nice? He took the time. <laughs> to, that's just how I see it. And again, maybe it is my own coping mechanism. Um, but as I do try and live my life as positively as possible, because, well, I just don't see the point in doing it in any other way, especially when we're dealing with wrestling or weights. The gym. Like these things could go away tomorrow and we'd figure out a way for life to go on. So the most unimportant of the important things, other way around, the most important of the unimportant things. So anything that is a byproduct of that, I'm just like, you know what, it's cool. And of course, it still gets me every now and then. Sometimes we'll say something and just destroy my confidence. Happened the other day, but is it personal? So I won't talk about it. But I think ultimately, you just got to dust yourself off and carry on. Now, there are levels to this. Like if things continue to go in, a, in, a, in an awesome direction and the audience grows, that'll be twice as much, three times as much. And maybe I will need to, to, to pull back. But I think I will always have that uh, mentality at some point. It's just awesome that people care. And if sometimes the way that people care is by being an insane person, I don't know. I, I, I just think that it's, it's a nice position to be in. And I feel privileged and I feel lucky. I mean, that's pretty much all I got. Now, again, leave a comment below and maybe smash some more questions so that we can do another one of these videos and I can just go through the comments and I can get them from there. Otherwise, like the video, share the video and subscribe to the bell, ding, ding, notification crew. There will be a video on the screen. Give it a click. Otherwise, go to simon.bigcartel.com. I have brand new merch news coming soon. It's twofold. I'm very excited about it, but I got to sell all my old stock first. So it's five pounds. It's five pounds, and I gave this code to patrons for a week, but if you've watched the video this long, you can have it too. Use the code BOGOFF, B-O-G-O-F, and you can get a second t-shirt for 250. That's right, I just need to sell the stock. So go there right now, there'll be a link in the description below. Anything you can do would be great. Same with GrillaMind.com, for Simon, Simon, Simon get 10% off. I like these supplements, I think they rock. Otherwise, Patreon.com, for Simon, 316 for reaction videos and other such nonsense. I'm on Cameo if you want a shout out. I believe that's it. Thank you very much for giving me the questions. I always enjoy these videos. Goodbye.